Hello, you're watching France Van Kaut, live from Paris. I'm Karen Roberts. Good to have you with us. We begin in Tehran, where angry demonstrators have set fire to the Saudi Arabian embassy in a backlash against the beheading of Sheikh Nimr al-Nimr, a Shiite cleric. The Sheikh was among 47 prisoners who were executed after being held on terrorism charges. Shaikh Reho has more on the situation taking place in Iran. <laughs> Video footage shared via social media as the Saudi Arabian embassy in Tehran is set ablaze. Iranian protesters out in force against Saudi Arabia's execution of a prominent Shiite cleric, Sheikh Nimr al-Nimr. According to an Iranian news agency, demonstrations escalated with petrol bombs being thrown and protesters storming the site. Inside the ransacked embassy, fires burn and furniture lies smashed from the siege. It comes just hours after the announcement of the death of 56-year-old cleric Nimr al-Nimr. He had been a key figure in anti-government protests in the Saudi Arabian Kingdom's oil-rich East in 2011, regularly criticizing the regime for marginalizing Shia minorities. His beheading sent shockwaves around the world, igniting backlash from countries with large Shia populations. The foreign ministry in Iran is urging protesters to cease from their attacks. Well, across the Middle East, there's been an angry reaction to Saudi Arabia's execution of the cleric Nimr al-Nimr. This report by Kyle G. Brown. Demonstrators took to the streets on Sunday in the east of Saudi Arabia to denounce the execution of prominent Shiite cleric Sheikh Nimr al-Nimr. The Sunni Muslim Kingdom of Saud put him to death along with 46 other men on Saturday, provoking outrage across the region. Protesters rallied just west of Bahrain's capital as well. And the mass execution, one of the largest in decades, was decried by the Lebanese Shiite movement, Hezbollah and Iraqi leaders. Saudi Arabia made a big mistake when it executed Al-Nimr. We had received promises that Saudi Arabia would pardon Sheikh Al-Nimr and his companions. But it did not honor its promise and has instead poured oil on the fire. This will spark new unrest in the region. Iran also criticized Saudi Arabia, with whom relations are already strained. The Saudi government supports terrorist movement and extremists but confronts domestic critics with oppression and execution. The Saudi government will pay a high price. Most of the executed were Sunnis convicted of involvement in al-Qaeda attacks. Nimr was jailed in 2012 in connection with a series of attacks that erupted the year before. The Sheikh was a vociferous critic of the Saudi regime, but supporters dispute accusations that he was linked to the violence that erupted in 2011. Western politicians and the United Nations had urged Saudi authorities to release him. Well, Sheikh Nimr al-Nimr was an outspoken critic of the Saudi regime, accusing the ruling family of marginalizing Shiite minorities in the country. He also played an integral role in Shiite protests during the Arab Spring. Ali al-Ahmed, an expert on Saudi Arabia, says Sheikh Nimr al-Nimr did not advocate violence. He was very clearly a peaceful dissident. He was arrested uh, many times for calling, not only for Shia rights, that's a misconception. In his speeches, he always calls for the rights of every uh, citizen in that country. And his main complaint was that we cannot be ruled by people who we didn't choose. Uh, really, uh, this is uh, uh, an advocate of, of democracy and people's rule, uh, al although he is uh, a man of the cloth, uh, as a religious man. He gave us an example of how a Muslim cleric is calling for people's rule, just like what happened in, in, the, in France uh, many years ago when the monarchy, the absolute monarchy, was overthrown by the enlightened uh, French. Uh, Nimr is, is uh, similar to these people. Protesters attacking the Saudi embassy in Tehran, hurling Molotov cocktails inside and smashing windows and furniture. They're angry over the execution of a prominent Shia cleric in Saudi Arabia. Those demonstrators and more around the globe are condemning the execution of 47 men in Saudi Arabia today. Chief among them, an outspoken Shia clerk, Nima al-Nimr. 
His death could deepen an already tense sectarian divide in the region, such as in Iraq, where prominent religious leaders are already demanding ties be severed with Saudi Arabia. Al Jazeera's Rob Matheson has more. These are some of the 47 men executed in Saudi Arabia. They've been convicted of plotting and carrying out terrorist attacks, targeting civilians and security forces. They included this man, Nimr al-Nimr, a prominent Shia cleric who was a central figure during Shia protests in Saudi Arabia, which intensified in early 2011. Also among them was a leading al-Qaeda preacher, Faris al-Zahrani. Human Rights Watch has criticized the executions, but Saudi Arabia says the men received a fair trial. The judiciary is objective and we deal objectively with the cases on merit. There is no difference between what a person does, regardless of his ethnic origin or affiliation or what he believes. We deal with facts and criminal intent. Last year, a special court in Riyadh sentenced Nimr to death for sedition, disobedience and bearing arms. Al-Nimr did not deny the political charges against him, but said he never carried weapons or called for violence. Saudi Arabia vowed to stamp out terrorism after 15 people were killed in a suicide bombing at a mosque in the southwestern city of Abha in August. Many of the others, such as al-Qaeda preacher Faris al-Zahrani, had been linked to attacks in the kingdom between 2003 and 2006, said to have been carried out by al-Qaeda. It has made sure that there is no difference between any form of terror. As long as it's threatening people, its cities, its economy, it will take care of it and deal with it swiftly. It did not differentiate be it a Shia source of terror or a Sunni source of terror. In October, Iran warned Saudi Arabia of what it called dire consequences if Nimr was killed. That warning was repeated when news of his death was released. Iranian government leaders say the Saudis will pay a high price. Iran will definitely try to utilize this by igniting the uh, soft spots in the region, particularly in Kuwait, Bahrain and Saudi Arabia. It has done it in the past and it would be a surprise if it attempts to do it again. Following these latest executions, more may still be on the way. At least 2,200 similar cases are still to be heard in Saudi Arabian courts. Rob Matheson, Al Jazeera. The U.S. State Department weighed in on the executions this afternoon. A statement by spokesman John Kirby expressed concern over the legal process in Saudi Arabia and the timing of these executions, saying, quote, We are particularly concerned that the execution of prominent Shia cleric and political activist Nimr al-Nimr risks exasperating sectarian tensions at a time when they urgently need to be reduced. The statement also called on the Saudi government to permit peaceful expression of dissent in the wake of their actions. Dozens of Shia protesters did exactly that in Saudi Arabia following the clerk's execution. <laughs> Groups of men and women took to the streets in eastern Saudi Arabia while chanting determination and al-Nimr until the grave. This is CNN Breaking News. You're in the CNN Newsroom. I'm Brianna Keeler in Washington, in for Poppy Harlow. We have breaking news from the Middle East tonight. The execution of a prominent Shiite cleric by Saudi Arabia has triggered numerous protests throughout the region. In Iran, a predominantly Shiite nation, they are now reacting angrily to the execution. Take a look. Oh, mashallah! Mashallah! This is Tehran, where these loud and angry demonstrations broke out tonight at the Saudi embassy. Someone actually throwing firebombs and riot police trying to control the crowd. They're trying to prevent protesters from getting inside this building. Shiite protesters have also taken to the streets in Saudi Arabia, a predominantly Sunni country. And on the phone now from Tehran, we have CNN producer Shirzad Bazorgmer. Uh, Shirzad, we've got fires, I know, burning at the Saudi embassy. There's riot police on the scene. Tell us what what it looks like right now. Well, it's practically over now, and uh, the police have cleared the area. Uh, there are at least about, I saw about 100, 150 policemen uh, blocking all access to the to the building. When I was there in about an hour, hour and a half ago, there was still smoke coming out of the building. The whole thing started about 2 Eastern, 2 p.m. Eastern time, and uh, the fire was still burning. Uh, and the smoke was coming out. 
but uh, they thought that there were at least four or five fire engines and ambulances that I saw that uh, something around 200, 300 people were left uh, demonstrating, but they were not so so uh, loud or anything. Apparently, those people who actually set the fire uh, had already left. They just came in, some of them by motorcycles, uh, throughout, uh, passed through the crowd and through fires at the, at the building. Some of them got into the building and apparently set fire inside the building and uh, ransacked some records that were left there. There were no Saudi uh, of, of, uh, uh, diplomats inside the building. They had already left as soon as they heard about the uh, uh, Sheikh al Namra's uh, execution in Saudi Arabia. Uh, I guess they anticipated that such thing could have happened. Um, so, um, there's so no sure, injuries, they, they no, did manage no, to get inside of the building yeah. and actually set fire inside of the building. You said they ransacked some records. What has the official reaction been to this, either from Saudi Arabia or or Iran? There is no reaction yet. It's it's uh, uh, 3:30 p. in the morning here, so uh, it's a little too early for official reaction. Uh, but we do know that uh, after the execution of the Sheikh Al Namra, uh, uh, the Saudi ambassador was uh, called to the foreign ministry in Iran and apparently given uh, some se severe notice regarding the execution of the Sheikh. The, who is a sh sh Shia leader in the Sunni Saudi Arabia. So uh, um, uh, the Iranians have sympathy with it. So do the Iraqis and uh, all the rest of the Shia world. All right, Shirzad, thank you so much uh, for being our eyes on the ground there. I do want to bring in CNN national security analyst Bob Baer now. And we also have military analyst, retired Lieutenant Ger uh, General Mark Hurtling. Bob, how concerned are you about more of this throughout the region? You know, it's not the demonstrations, Brianna. It's it's touching off a conflict between Iran and Saudi Arabia. We've been close for about a year now with the war in Yemen, with with um, Iraq as as well as Syria. I mean, it, it's hard for most people to understand how close we are to a general conflict between these two countries. And this is what concerns me. And the way the Iranians look at it is this: Sheikh Sheikh Nimr. Um, was an activist, but he wasn't a violent one. I mean, in anybody's terms, he didn't deserve to be executed. So the Saudis have gone way beyond norms on this. And they haven't, by the way, they haven't had so many beheadings and executions since 1980. And that was the Mecca Mosque takeover. So this is a big thing, and it's causing widespread uh, anger in the region. And another thing I think to note, General Hurtling, is the reaction from the United States expressing uh, some concern. But that, I think, really, you read between the lines, Saudi Arabia is an ally to the U.S. What are the sensitivities here uh, with the U.S. clearly behind the scenes, not happy with what has happened? Yeah, well, yeah, a couple of things, Brianna. What I'd suggest is it's not only just the reaction to uh, Nimr al-Nimr being executed, but it is the execution of 47 prisoners in 12 different locations uh, today in one sw fell swoop. And this is uh, over 150 that the Saudis have executed uh, using Sharia law. And uh, it ranges, I think we have to put it in perspective, the Saudis will say, hey, we're doing part of what this is all about is uh, uh, attributed to our laws and the people they executed today ranged in in um, in drug trafficking all the way up to insurrection so this is again the application of sharia law under their court systems they will defend it as being part of what they do but it certainly can be seen as nothing but a provocation the thing to remember though uh, nimr al nimr was a, a Saudi Arabian. He was an Arab. He was not a Persian from uh, Iran. Uh, he was trying to instill a little provocation in the eastern provinces where a lot of Shia live in Saudi Arabia. So he was, I mean, I hate to use this example, but he was the equivalent of Martin Luther King trying to get the people, the Shia in Saudi Arabia to rise up and get representation. It was a violation against the Saudi house and they saw it as a provocation and insurrection. So that's why he was killed. He was arrested several years ago and sentenced to death. And there were a lot of people that said he wouldn't be executed, but he was. And I think you're seeing the reaction not only in Iran, but there has already been condemnation in Lebanon and Iraq. And it certainly comes at a horrible time, given some of the other, as Bob said, some of the other fights going on in the region right now.
So, Bob, why would Saudi Arabia do this now? And also put in context just how important Saudi Arabia is to the U.S. as it fights the war on terror. Uh, well, I mean, Saudi Arabia is worried about its own stability. This war in Yemen has taken a great toll. There's a lot of uh, disaffection with the, the second crown prince, Mohammed bin Salman, who's taking more and more power. You've got uh, terrible economic problems in Saudi Arabia in the sense they've put on tax on gasoline, has been raised 50 percent. Uh, and the, the House of Saud is, is, is worried about its stability, as General Hurling said. I mean, this is they are reacting to a very dire situation inside the kingdom um, and we really need to be careful of this situation because I'm worried about a war between Iran and Saudi Arabia as I just said and you know the Iranians could take out the Saudi oil facilities in a matter of hours with their rockets and there's nothing we could do yeah and Brianna I'd add to that and it, it's not only a fight between Iran and Saudi Arabia as Bob said but it is, as he also stated, the the uh, explosion within the country. You know, the the new king is attempting to tamp down and provide some uh, some new approaches to things. But truthfully, uh, there there's a lot of rumblings within Saudi Arabia that could cause an implosion in the country as well, and that would not be a good thing in the region. And how worried are you, General Hurtling, that this will will just trigger a wider Sunni Shiite confrontation? What are the chances of that happening? Well, it's, it's, I'd first say that it's not all about religion. It, it is all about, you know, the way the Saudis do things. But certainly there is an appearance that it is more sectarian violence between Sunni and Shia. That's the appearance. But this is really the House of Saud, as Bob said, trying to tamp down insurrection within their country, trying to, trying to keep things under control when economic difficulties, when oil prices uh, and the price of a barrel of oil is, is significant lowered and they are having some challenges. They are being challenged on the outside, not only by Iran, but by Russia and others. So yeah, this, this is traumatic and, and it's, it's somewhat uh, reminiscent of what happened prior to World War I, where a lot of seemingly small things contributed to a much larger conflict. We're seeing this all over the Middle East now. And, and I, we're looking now at pictures from Kashmir uh, where I, this is really the concern, Bob, that this could spread to other places. We saw this in Kashmir. Do you think that we will see this in the coming days in, in other countries? I think uh, 2016 is going to be a tough year, as General Hurtling said. I just I think the chances of a, a general war occurring in the region are pretty good, which could wow. draw in Russia, the United States. I know this sounds, you know, like the skull, the sky's falling, but it, it is a very dangerous situation, and it's not getting better. Um, and none of these wars are coming to, an, to a quick conclusion. And, you know, getting drawn into this could, could happen in spite of our best, you know, interests. All right, Bob Baer, General Hurtling, thank you, gentlemen, so much. Hello. Iranian protesters angry at Saudi Arabia's execution of a prominent Shia cleric have stormed the Saudi embassy in Tehran, setting fire to the building. Police dispersed the crowd after about an hour. Video posted on social media appears to show part of the building under attack and on fire. We can't independently verify the pictures, but the building shown here does appear to be the Saudi embassy in Tehran. This followed the Saudi execution on Saturday of Sheikh Nima al-Nima. He had been convicted of terrorism offences and was one of 47 people put to death. Supporters say he'd never advocated violence. It's led to a furious reaction from the Iranian leadership. Let's get more now on that background from the story from the BBC's Kevin Connolly. As news of the execution of Sheikh Nimir al-Nimir spread, protesters took to the streets in Saudi Arabia's Shia city of Katif, an act of defiance in a kingdom where public dissent is not tolerated. And Shia anger is spreading in the Middle East. In neighboring Bahrain, the protests were angry and passionate. Sheikh Nimir al-Nimir was a leader of the Shia religious minority in Saudi Arabia, where the royal family see themselves as leaders of Sunni Islam. Rivalry between the two branches of the faith is ancient, but it dangerously divides the Middle East to this day. 
As the Saudi authorities cracked down during the Arab Spring on Shia attempts to bring calls for political reform into the kingdom itself, Sheikh Anemir was arrested. He had defied the Saudi authorities to prove their charge that he was acting on behalf of Iran, the leader of Shia Islam and regional rival for power to Saudi Arabia. Iranian reaction has been angry. Tehran said Saudi Arabia supported extremism abroad while suppressing criticism at home. And from the website of the country's supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, came this comparison between official execution in Saudi Arabia and the murderous beheadings of the so-called Islamic State. This ancient fault line is a dangerous division in the modern Middle East. Sunni fighters are pitched against Shia in conflicts from Syria to Yemen to Iraq. I think Saudi Arabia made a big mistake when it executed al namir as this will fuel the existing sectarian violence in the region more and more. Saudi Arabia's execution of Nimir al-Nimir will deepen those tensions at a dangerous moment. Kevin Connolly, BBC News. Well, BBC Persian service correspondent Hardy Neely is in Washington for us now. Uh, Hardy, as you are in Washington, what's the reaction from the State Department? Let's start there. I mean, we can say that that's safe to say that uh, the State Department was very cautious in wording about um, um, their state in, in their statement about these executions. They've been saying that uh, the U.S. government is expressing their co its concern about this legal process in Saudi Arabia, and they also reaffirmed their call on uh, Saudi Arabia to respect and protect human rights, and also urge the government to uh, permit the peaceful expression of dissent. About the executions of, execution of uh, Sheikh Nemer, uh, they say that uh, they're concerned about uh, the risks of uh, separating the, uh, the sectarian tension in, uh, in the region. Uh, that's what the State Department says, the U.S. State Department says about these executions in Saudi Arabia. And I know you've been monitoring the situation and reaction from Tehran and also what the newspapers are saying. What is the main thrust of the response? The main, the main hardline papers in Tehran are uh, accusing the Saudi government for um, these executions. Uh, one of th uh, the Kehan paper, which is the, we can say, the major hardline paper in Tehran, one of the opponents of the uh, Rouhani government, they say that the Saudi Arabia is digging its own grave with this execution. And we can see th uh, some of the hardliners in the streets, um, uh, some, of, um, some of them have been raiding on the compounds, Saudi compounds in Tehran, uh, in Mashhad also, uh, the Saudi consulate. And now the police, the Iran police has um, uh, dispersed them and um, uh, they say, police say that they have arrested some of the protesters who broke into the embassy and uh, break, the the break the windows, uh, ripped off some papers, the pictures of uh, Saudi government officials. That's what we've been seeing on social media and also on official news agencies. Of course, Iran is the Shia power in the region, but the Revolutionary Guards Corps has called for a harsh revenge. Has there been any more outlining of what they mean by that? Uh, they say that we have no relations with um, Shia dissent dissidents in uh, Saudi Arabia. They say that we support them uh, spiritually, we support them uh, morally, um, as we support every suppressed. But um, um, in recent weeks, uh, Iranian officials have been really vocal and uh, speaking about um, this um, verdict uh, for Sheikh Nemer. They have been really expressing the concerns and condemning the execution, uh, but uh, they don't speak about any details of what they can probably do inside Saudi Arabia about this. They are more talking about the people of Saudi Arabia uh, protesting these uh, executions and this suppression. BBC Persian service correspondent Hardy Neely from Washington there, thank you. Anthony Kordsman is the author of a number of reports into Saudi Arabia and security in the Middle East and he's with the Center for Strategic and International Studies in Washington and joins us now by a webcam from there. Uh, thanks for your time today. First of all, let's get your assessment of what you think is behind the execution of Nima al-Nima. 
I think it's important to understand that ever since Khomeini came to power, there's been a constant level of tension between Saudi Arabia and Iran. Iran has sponsored some elements of extremism, of violence in the eastern province among the Shiite group there. It certainly does not seem to have been extremely active, but like Bahrain, it has been present. And this has been going on now for decades. It's gotten much worse as Iran's influence has expanded in areas like Syria, Iraq, and Lebanon, as there's now almost a competition for influence and power between Iran and Saudi Arabia. Now, the events surrounding the sheikh's execution are somewhat uncertain. Amnesty has described this as a human rights violation. The Saudis have not provided the specifics of the indictment, but this particular sheikh has condemned and attacked senior members of the royal family, called for independence, has ties to Iran, he has not in the past seemed to be violent, but at least in a previous arrest, he became involved in a car chase. According to one press report, he was shot in the leg. He has a nephew who has been found guilty of actually violent terrorism. So the events here aren't clear. What is clear is that you have this broadening tension between Iran and Saudi Arabia and Sunni and Shiite. It's a struggle for influence and power in Syria, Lebanon, Iraq. And you're watching a broader range of tension. It's expanding into Yemen, where again, Saudi Arabia and Iran are competing. There have been problems in Bahrain, but also you've had Sunni on Shiite violence in Afghanistan, India. You can't take this out of context. You have to realize that in addition to sort of violent terrorist extremist Sunni groups, there's this much broader level of sectarian tension and violence building up throughout the region. Indeed, but we are getting a, a much greater war of words now, as we've just been hearing from Hardy Neely, comments about digging their own grave and also talks about a harsh revenge being given by the Iran's Revolutionary Guard Corps. Well, the IRGC is not famous for the moderation of its rhetoric, and it manages to attack virtually everyone in about the same tones. Uh, it's no gentler in describing any given incident with the United States. And at one point, when Britain and Iran had severed relations, the IRGC could be pretty critical of Britain. It's not a place you look to for moderate rhetoric. The other side of this, too, is that on the 15th of December, Saudi Arabia announced an Arab alliance against terrorism. But it was very clearly a Shiite uh, alliance. And it was a Shiite alliance directed primarily at Sunni extremists. So as was mentioned earlier, you had 47 executions in this new year. Four of those were Shiite. The others were Sunni. So you have to put this in context. You have a Saudi struggle against both Shiites and Sunni extremists like ISIS and Al-Qaeda, a struggle for influence and power in the Gulf and in the region, broader sectarian tensions, and everyone, unfortunately, seems to be headed for a more extreme use of rhetoric. And just briefly, if you would, uh, Mr. Korsman, what does this mean for Syria? What does this mean for finding a more uh, harmonious Middle East? I think it has been very, very uncertain that there was any real chance that the negotiations that now Europe, the United States, and Russia have been trying to put together was really going to bring a stable solution. This is not so much a fight there with ISIS. It's a fight between Alawites and Shiites on the one side, backed by Iran, and by Sunni Arab rebel groups backed by the UAE, Saudi Arabia, and Kuwait. Anthony Kordsman from the Center for Strategic and International Studies from Washington. We appreciate your analysis. Thank you.
The BBC understands that a gunman who killed the Irish cameraman Simon Cumbers in Saudi Arabia in 2004 was among those executed on Saturday. Mr Cumbers was on assignment with the BBC security correspondent Frank Gardner who was severely injured in the same attack. Adel Abdur Dubati was sentenced in 2014 for taking part in a number of al-Qaeda attacks. Neither the Saudi authorities nor the Irish Foreign Ministry have confirmed his execution. I'm the leading state sponsor of terrorism.